Hello everybody and welcome to my knitting podcast. My name is Jessica McDonald and I am a knitting pattern designer and I live in central Idaho. Today is May the 22nd. It's Friday. I'm recording this today because my husband can't work on the fence today because it's raining. So he has all the kids so I can record a podcast. We put in a pasture last year and this year we're putting in the fence. Well, we planted the grass last year and now we're putting in the fence. I'm trying to get some steers out there this summer. So there's only a little bit of work left to do for him to get it done. One day would be enough to get it all done and squared away. But it's raining so he can't weld because he's going to weld in the rain. And he needs to finish the last little bit of welding before he can put the last stretch of wire across and then done and that will be very nice it's kind of dominated his life for the last month and a half two months every weekend he's been working really hard on it him and his dad Jimmy likes to go help them and it's really cute to see the three guys out there working on the fence Jimmy just following along behind them just doing whatever three-year-olds do he doesn't really help obviously but he just feels so proud of himself for being a big boy out there helping the guys with the fence. So he has a lot of fun with that. But it's raining today, so there's no fencing going on right now. So I can record a podcast. So the first thing I want to show you is what I'm wearing. This is the wood smoke sweater. The pattern for this is going to come out in one week from today that I'm filming. I don't know when I'll get this podcast up sometime next week, but it's going to come out on, let me look at the day, it's going to come out on, because you probably want to know, the 29th, it's going to come out on the 29th, so just one more week till this one comes out. It is just a fantastic basic sweater. It's got a round yoke, the adult sizes have short rows in the back to lift the neckline, and then... The body is worked straight, just no shaping at all, and ribbing at the hem and at the cuffs. It's got a slim fitting sleeve, which I really like. The slim fitting sleeve, so that's what I that's what I do. So I've designed this as kind of the ultimate basic sweater for everyone from three months to a 70 inch finished chest circumference. So there's 20 sizes in this one single pattern. So you can make it for anybody. And anybody can make it for anybody. This is a really beginner friendly sweater. All you need to know how to do is cast on, knit purl, make one left, and SSK, knit two together, and then also the German short rows in the adult sizes. There aren't any German short rows in the young kids. As you get into the older kids, like I think 8, 10, and 12 years have a little bit of short rows in the back because they're getting bigger and I felt like it would fit better if they had the short rows in the neck. So that's what I did. So it's just really simple, really easy, really beginner friendly, but it fits really nice. It fits really, really nice. I made mine out of Autumn Indigo Merino Fingering held together. You can see the fuzz held together with mohair. So let me focus that. So you can see it makes just a really fantastic fuzzy, flowy, drapey fabric when you do that. The Merino held together with mohair, which is very popular these days and I can see why. This is the first time I've done that. The Merino with um, mohair and it makes a really, really nice fabric. So I imagine I'm gonna do this again because it's just, the fuzziness of it, it's just so nice and it's cozy and warm and it's, it's just really fun and soft and warm. So I'll probably do it again. But this is my first, my first finished object to show you today. I do a longer cuff. I like a longer cuff and I like it snug because as you wear your sweater, all of the ribbings will end up stretching out and I don't want it to be loose and gaping. So make sure it's snug to begin with because then it will only loosen up a little bit. So, Like I said, this is the perfect sweater for a beginner. If you've never knit a sweater before, 
this would be the one to start with because it's really easy, it's really simple and straightforward. The pattern is written really clearly. None of the test knitters found any problems with it. It's really straightforward, really simple and easy. And it's be a fantastic sweater for somebody with more experience who just wants something really calm and mindless that they can just really relax into knitting and end up with a great fitting sweater at the end of it that was easy to make. So, this is my first one to show you. Um, oh, I should tell you about the yarn. So, I wrote this up at a gauge of six, six stitches per inch, which means you can use the fingering merino held together with mohair, or you can use a sport weight or a DK weight yarn on this. Um, I don't know if all DK weights would work. It might end up being kind of tight for some DK weights, but I'm knitting another sweater in a DK weight that is also at six stitches per inch. So sport or DK weight or the merino held together with fingering or the mingering, fingering merino held together with silk mohair would all work. So you have a lot of options for what kind of yarn you want to use to knit the sweater out of. You could go with something really soft and fuzzy, or you could even use a more rustic yarn and end up with something with an entirely different feel, maybe something with a little tweed in it. I had a test knitter who knit this with a speckled yarn and held together with the mohair, and that was really pretty. And I just I really like her sweater. It's just got really subtle speckles in it. It's not heavily speckled. And it's really pretty and I'm kind of jealous of it, but the problem is that there are no speckled non-superwash yarns and I don't knit with superwash yarns, so that kind of eliminates any speckles at all. But a heavily speckled yarn, I found out the hard way, um, a heavily speckled yarn is not something that I like. I have a half-finished sweater sitting right there that is in a heavily speckled yarn that I just, just don't don't really like that. But something with just really light speckles is just so pretty and I'd really like to try it. So if you know somebody who dyes yarn, a non-superwash yarn with a little bit of speckles in it, let me know. Um, maybe I'll make another one of these with a few speckles. Who knows, maybe someday. Right now I have a lot of projects on my plate. I have this one, I have another finished sweater to show you. And then I've got another sweater I've got in the works that I'm going to get ready for this fall. And then another adult sweater that I need to start to get ready for this fall. And then I'm going to do a whole fleet of kid sweaters because I always make my kids sweaters. That's why, that's, that's why I do this because I like to make them sweaters. So I have a lot to do so I, I don't think that I'll... I'll make another one of these for a while. That was a bit of a tangent, but okay. This is the first finished object I have to show you. This is my wood smoke sweater coming out one week from today. I will include a link down below for you to head over to Ravelry to grab it. I don't have my website done yet, so it will be on Ravelry and then a day or two later on Love Crafts. You can also sign up for my newsletter in the description box down below if you want to be among the first to hear about my new designs and also get the best discount. So that's this spiel on this one. Next up is this green one I need to show you. I'm going to show you the lace real quick before I put it on, get it nice and close. So it's got this lovely simple lace yoke. It's a really nice dark green but it's really hard to really get it accurately with, in any sort of light. So this is what it's like. It's got a little bit of, well, it's not really ruffling. It's just got a little bit of folding in the yoke, which was not intentional when I designed it. But once I had gotten through the yoke and I tried it on, I thought that it was actually really pretty. And so I decided to keep it because I like it. It's, makes it a little bit softer and more romantic. And then you have the very, very simple lace. So I'm going to change my sweater so you can see this one on. And I'm back. So here's the green sweater. 
This one is a collaboration with Primrose Yarn Co. This is her house fingering and it's 50% merino, 50% Shetland, I believe. I don't have the yarn tag handy, but she's dyed it up in a whole fleet of really pretty colors. This is the Colorway Wester, which is just not showing up really well on the screen. Maybe I'm too close. Maybe I'll back up a little bit. This is Wester, which is really lovely, rich green. Kind of a dark, more foresty type green. Um, but it's really pretty. I really love this color. This color is amazing. Greens are kind of tricky for a lot of people to make one that I like, and it's my favorite color. So when I saw this color, I, I knew that it had to be, had to be mine. <laughs> So this one is called Desert Spring. I named it that because it's green. Plus I think the way the lace goes kind of comes up. I think it looks like um, new, new, new plant growth. Kind of like the sprays of new leaves coming out. So I named it Desert Spring. I really like to take pictures of it now out on the desert when it's Everything is green and blooming and beautiful, but we'll see if we'll see if I can make that happen. It might be too much of a of a trip to <laughs> all the kids. But anyway, so this is Desert Spring. You can see it, the yoke ruffles up a little bit, but I don't know if you'll like that. But I thought it it made it look a little bit romantic and pretty. There's the lace so I've scaled the yoke so that as you go up in size and the sizes you get a deeper and deeper yoke as you go up and for the larger sizes you just add on additional repeats of the lace so you can see that there's this much lace in my yoke but this is filling up from there's a little bit of stockinette at the beginning and then it fills the rest of the yoke with lace and I wanted that same effect through all of the sizes. So as you go up in the sizes, there's more lace in the yoke. So you'll just have more and more lace so that hopefully all of the sizes get the same effect in the yoke as in the sample. So there's short rows above and below the lace. I think that makes for a really nice fit when there's two wedges of short rows above and below the patterning. So that's why I did that. And there's no, no shaping, just straight. And a slim fitting sleeve with a nice snug cuff, which is how I like my sweaters to fit. This is a really nice yarn to knit with. It's got a lot of really nice bounce in it. So it just, it knits really smoothly and really well. And it's just flows through your fingers really nicely. It was so enjoyable to knit with. I really, really loved working with it. And it makes a really nice, a really, really nice fabric. It's got a teensy bit of a halo in it. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's got a teensy bit of a halo in it, a little bit of fuzz. It's not completely smooth when you've got it knit up. And it is a little more rustic thanks to the Shetland. So if you are really sensitive to itchy yarns, it might be too much for you. I, I don't find it to be bothersome. I'm not wearing anything underneath this sweater and, and I'm not feeling itchy or uncomfortable at all. So I'm fine with it, but somebody who's really sensitive might not be. So this is Desert Spring. It is in test knitting right now. Um, the test knitters are working away, and I have this one planned to be released on July 15th. So if you love this sweater and you want to grab a copy of it as soon as it comes out, you can sign up for my newsletter down below and be among the first to know about it. So there's that one. Those are my two finished objects, and now I'll show you my whips. So... I will start with the sock because this is kind of exciting. This is my first sock that I'm making for myself. The very first one. This is the Natural Beauty Socks, which is a free pattern by Annabelle Williams if you sign up for her newsletter. 
So it's got this really pretty lace in the middle and then cables on each side and the bottom is just plain. It's knit from the toe up and it starts with Judy's Magic Cast On, which I messed up. Let's see if I can show you how I messed up on this. This is the first pair I'm making for myself. I've made three or four pairs so far, but those were all top down. So there you can hopefully see the ridge. So I messed it up. I'm not sure entirely how. The inside looks nice and beautiful and smooth. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. It's kind of hard to see. Can you see that? I think that's what it's supposed to look like on the outside. So somehow I managed to make it inside out. Um, but it, it doesn't really bother me that there's this little ridge at the end of the toe. I really don't think anybody's going to notice. It's not, it's really not noticeable at all. Um, next time I'll just pick a different video tutorial for the second sock and hopefully get the second one right. So I was halfway through the toe and I realized I messed it up and I just didn't feel like ripping back and starting over, so I didn't. Um, so it's just gonna have a messed up toe. So this is the Natural Beauty Sock in Annabelle Williams' um, Natural Sock. Ooh, the, the tag is missing. I don't have the tag. So I don't remember what color this is. Maybe it's Hidden Gems? I think it might be Hidden Gems, which is a really nice purple. It's not really bright. It's really nice tonal purple. Purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors, but I don't use it very much. So I thought it would be fun to use purple in this sock. So this is a really nice yarn. It is pretty rustic, I would say. I don't think it's going to be itchy at all, but it's got some crunch to it which is probably a good thing for making a sock out of um, a yarn that doesn't have any nylon or anything in it because it's going to need to take a lot of wear. I, I'm not working on these very fast because it's a US size one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter, I believe. So it's a really small needle and it's a really tight gauge. Plus the one I have had a really short cable. This is a 24 inch cable. So it's pretty hard on my hands to work on this, so I've only been limiting myself to one repeat of the chart each day, which is eight rows, so I work eight rows every day, and um, I'm into the third day of that. I've been knitting them during lunch and uh, breakfast, just while we sit at the table, which is a nice little project to work on while we're sitting there, and I get a little bit in and done, and it's really fun really enjoy the pattern. It's really simple and easy and even though it's just a 2x2 two two cable, I cannot do it without a cable needle. So there's that. Maybe someday I'll figure out how to do it. I tried to do it without a cable needle on like the second crossing and I end up dropping stitches and I had to pick them all back up and go up several rows and it was just a giant mess. So I'm going to just keep using, I use a DPN. Um, I've got couple in my bag so I just use a double pointed needle when it's time to do the cable crossing because I can't do it without a second needle so this is going to take me a long time to make but I'm perfectly okay with that it's coming into summer even though today it's cold it's coming into summer so I'm not going to want to wear wool socks for several months anyway so I'm just going to try to make some different pairs of socks over the summer I've got another pattern that calls for a worsted weight yarn so I think I'll, after I'm done with these socks, I'll start those socks. And I'm just going to try to make some socks over the summer to learn how to do it. Because I, you know, I knit sweaters all the time, but socks are kind of a different, kind of a different thing. So I'd like to knit, um, follow some people's patterns and, and knit some socks before I even embark on designing any, even though I've already got some, I've already got some ideas for sock patterns, even though I've, you know, barely started into sock knitting, but I think it's important to get a little bit of experience 
making them before I decide to go tell somebody else how to make them because otherwise it's kind of the, the blind leading the blind, you know? So I'm gonna make, make myself some socks over the summer and just have a lot of fun learning how to do that and, and figuring that out. It's a new thing, it's a lot of fun. It's a little bit different, which it's always good to try something a little bit different every once in a while. So this is the natural beauty socks. And my other whip, this is my sweater that I just started um, earlier this week. As soon as I got done with Desert Spring, I cast on for this one. This one is probably going to be named Cinder. Um, so this is also done in collaboration with Primio, Primrose Yarn Co. This is her Cottage DK, which is a Merino Yak Silk Blend. So I'm doing color work sweater oh look how pretty that is let me let me find a way that I can show this off nicely because it's kind of all bunched up do you see it now Whee! there it's still focused on my face there we go isn't that pretty I am just in love with this so pretty, so pretty. I love color work, which you may know from watching this podcast or seeing what I do elsewhere on the internet. I do a lot of color work. So this is, this is my first Rhinebeck sweater. It's designed to be, I'm gonna release it at, um, well, I'm not gonna be at Rhinebeck, but at the same time as Rhinebeck, which hopefully is able to go forward. But even if it isn't, this is, this is my Rhinebeck sweater. So, it's May, but it's a lovely fall theme sweater. I'm using the colorways. See, this is silver and cold. I'm gonna have to pull out the yarn tag. The dark gray is the Lost Souls. And then, I believe this one is the Return of the Phoenix, the orange. Oh, the Days of the Phoenix, the orange of the Days of the Phoenix. So, they're really pretty and they work really well together. Um, it's gonna be a really stunning yoke. One thing that is a little bit different from my, my usual is I've got orange in it. I don't really do orange, you know? I don't think I've ever done an orange before. As I was picking out colors, as I was working with Kelsey to pick out colors, she laid these three colors next to each other, even though I'd asked her to put in a different color other than the orange. I told her to put in, I think a blue or a green, but she put the orange in and I was like, ooh, yes. It has to be that one, it has to be that one because the colors just go so well together. And that pop of orange just really makes it. It's, it's really pretty. I'm gonna really love this and it's gonna turn out gorgeous. So there is three color knitting in this yoke. So I know a lot of people are kind of intimidated by knitting with three colors. When I do it, I hold the main color in my right hand and the contrast color in my left. And so when there's three colors, I just drop the one contrast color and pick up the other one. And Move like that. It's pretty slow the way I do it, um, but I mean, it's fun, so whatever, right? You've got to knit something, so you might as well enjoy, enjoy it. I don't mind that it takes a long time. I really don't. Um, some people might find that frustrating. Um, there are rings you can buy that, where you can just um, put the different colors through the ring and hold it separately. I might try that someday, but for now I'm fine with being super duper slow on my three color knitting. I think last night I was sitting on the couch for an hour and I only did two rounds. <laughs> so I am really slow um, with the three colors, but I'll get faster as I get more practice in. Um, yeah. In the chart, there are 21 rows out of 50 that are three color knitting, just in case you wanted to know. So, and I really don't think you can do it in two. I think this one needs three colors to really make the yoke. 
So this one, I just started. There's short rows in the back of the neck too. And I'm gonna put another wedge of short rows down underneath the color work just because it fits so nice when you do that. I'm not a huge fan of, you know, this wedge of main color that goes around the back. But I don't know. Aside from just putting the short rows underneath the whole motif, I don't know in any other way to to change that. But it just fits really nice when there's short rows both above and below. So I decided to do this. But it looks okay. And it's pretty common to be done that way. So I think everybody understands that. So this is my current sweater project, which I'm really loving. The color work is addictive. It's fun to just keep knitting every row and what is it going to look like after the next row. And so it's very addictive to knit color work. And that's my current, my current sweater project. So this one's going to be out in October for Ryan back. That is all of my knitting that I have on right now. So as soon as I get, probably as soon as I get down into the body of this one, this uh, color work sweater, I'll probably start the next one. That way I always have something on the needles that's just plain stockinette because the body's just gonna be plain stockinette. And then I can also have another project that's a little more fun with doing the, doing the yoke. Um, so those are, those are my projects. Thank you for being here. Um, I think this podcast was probably a little disjointed. I'm feeling a little bit out of sorts. I haven't been here for a couple months. My goal was to podcast every month. When I started this podcast, I was gonna podcast every month. And that was, what, two years ago that I started? And I'm on, I think this is number nine, <laughs> episode number nine. So obviously, uh, obviously that did not happen the way I had intended to do it. But I have four small children. The youngest is seven months old, so it's kind of hard to find time to podcast. It's hard to just sit somewhere where it's quiet, even if it's only for like 20 or 30 minutes just film a podcast because even if I turn on a show for them and try to do it when my husband's not here they're gonna come find me there's no way I can escape them unless somebody is got them distracted downstairs so my husband is downstairs with them right now so that's just the season of life I'm in as uh, they get older I'm sure I'll have plenty of time to podcast and then I'll miss when they were little so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll podcast when I can and yes, enjoy my babies while they're little. So I'll wrap this up. You can find um, links below to everything I talked about. I'll put some show notes in the description box. I'll put this, the link for my newsletter sign up and I'll put information on how you can find me elsewhere on the internet. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.